Hey guys, this is Bea from Responsive Muse. This is the first chapter of our online course to learn how to build a responsive website in Adobe Muse. So this first chapter is basically an introduction and what is important to understand is the concept of responsive design. So responsive design is basically means that your design should respond automatically to the screen size by accommodating all the elements. So what it means is that it has to look nice in any device. It has to look nice in a small device like a mobile phone, in a tablet, or something bigger like a desktop. So it, maybe if you don't understand this, what I'm going to do is, as an example, I'm going to show you, I'm going to use MuseWidgets.com, Adobe Muse official website, to explain the concept of responsiveness. So as you can see here, we have, we have logos, we have a menu, and we have some elements down here. So as you've seen, uh, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the browser smaller. And this is what happens when you make the browser smaller. So in the beginning, you have like space on the right and on the left of the, of the website. But the smaller it gets, the less space there is. So it will reach to a point where there's no space and something happens. So when this happens, it means it has reached a breakpoint. It means that your design your current design is broken so you need to make a new decision so what's going to happen now how you are going to relocate all these elements and how it's going to look good in the in this browser in the smaller browser so designer here has chosen to move some elements and instead of four columns now we get three columns here and it goes smaller and smaller and smaller so we will reach to the next breakpoint design breaks again and what's going to happen here so we get all the elements up here in the header aligned, centered aligned, and we have two columns. And then if we go smaller, 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 we reach to a point that we'll get a mobile menu. And we have just one column and the elements here are bigger. So this is responsive design. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, we're going to go to Muse and we're going to bring all this into it. Okay, so this is Muse, so if you want to create a website, the first thing is to go here to Create New. Now, basic options is here, you get Fluid Width and Fixed Width. So, actually here it says Fluid Width and explains a little bit what it is about. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Choose fixed width to create static layouts that do not resize or fluid width to create a layout that resizes to the browser's window. The choice of fixed initial pages and is a default for is a default for new pages which is editable in the site properties dialog. Okay. I'm going to explain you what this is. So I'm going to create a website, one fluid and one fixed. And we're going to, I'm going to tell you the difference. Me personally, I prefer to use fixed websites. So, uh, first recommendation is maximum page width is 1,200, okay? Um, first, I'm going to make, I'm going to create the fluid website. And now I'm going to go to file, new site. And here I'm just going to click to get the fixed website and the same thing. Page width is 1,200. So we get two websites here. Website. And then what I'm going to do this is the uh, Muse layout, okay? So when you, up here you can see the first page called Home, and this is the Master Pages. Master Pages, we're gonna talk about it in the next chapter. So here is, we get all the pages, all the pages that you can find in your menu or even your sub pages, okay? Inside the, 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 the parent page. So to create new page, what you have to do is just, if you hover over the page, you'll see a plus sign here. So just click on it and you'll get another page and so on as many as you want and here if you double click you can rename it let's say this is going to be called services and this is going to be called about me and contact here in services for example we can create a sub page and we can create um, prices here you can bring down the size so you can see the map of your website 
all right so this is how you create your different pages so you can directly go into each one and change your design okay so we're going to talk about this a bit deeper in another another chapter so now i'm going to go back to what we were talking before that it was the difference between fluid and fixed so this one here is i'm going to double click so i'm going to enter the home page here and double click this one too so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag, a, I'm going to create first the breakpoint. So here my maximum breakpoint is 1200. I'm in the fluid. You can see the icon is different. This icon means fluid breakpoint. And this icon over here, which is only a square, it means fixed breakpoint. So I'm going to create different breakpoints. So um, I recommend you using this one. Some people drive themselves crazy uh, using a whole bunch of breakpoints. But if you use this, you're pretty safe. Okay, so first breakpoint is 1,200. Next breakpoint is 1,000. This will cover most of the devices. Next breakpoint, 768. And other smaller breakpoint is 4. 80, which covers mobile phones. There are other mobile phones like some iPhones, iPhone 5 and, and lower is actually 320, the screen size is 320 pixels, but they are a bit outdated. Um, so you can actually create a 320 if you want to, but I personally use a 480, that's the smallest that I use, okay? So that's how you create the breakpoints. You, I'm gonna do the same thing here, no matter if it's fixed or fluid, you will create it the same way. So over the, the purple breakpoint bar, right click and add breakpoint. As you can see here, I set in the beginning the 1200, uh, the maximum width is 1200 pixels. But if you use a fixed breakpoint, Muse like adds 200 pixels. So 200 pixels was 100 and 100 to each side. So I'm going to create next breakpoint, which is the thousand one here. Next, 768. I'm creating exactly the same breakpoints, okay? And 480. Okay. Going back to fluid, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag an element here. I'm going to get, I'm going to fill this uh, uh, with a photo. So I'm going to click on fill and I'm going to add an image. So this is how you add images into Muse. You can actually drag the, 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 the your assets or you can do this, create a rectangle. Okay, I'm going to set it to fill and I'm done. Okay, so what we can do in Muse is set the behavior of the different elements. So when you have your element clicked, you'll see more options will appear here and you have ones called resize. So I'm going to click here so it displays. You can choose none, responsive width, responsive width and height, and stretch to browser's width. So this will react differently if you are in a fluid or in a, in a fixed breakpoint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this four times so you see how it will work with a fluid breakpoint first I'm going to click on none second it's responsive with next is responsive width and height and next is stretch to browsers width Okay, that's what it does. It will stretch the browser with. Okay, so the others have exactly the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens here with a fixed. Doing exactly the same thing, I'm just going to create a rectangle and I'm going a frame. So I'm going to fill it with the same image. Sorry, and I'm just going to scale to fill, and that's it. Exactly, copy it four times and set the different behavior. Okay, first is none, second is responsive width, third is responsive width and height, 
and this one is stressed browsers with. Okay. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going back to the fluid and I'm going to preview it. So this is a fluid width. So what it does is that I'm going to make the browser smaller. So whenever it hits a breakpoint, it'll just, you see how it goes all the way down and all, all the way it resizes. So first one was none. So I'm just going to go here so you can see how it will react. So you can see how it gets to the breakpoint is fluid all over the way. Okay. It can be really tricky sometimes because it's kind of hard to control your elements with a fluid breakpoint. So now I'm going to preview the fixed breakpoint. Okay, so first what I'm going to show you is, remember I said that news kind of creates, um, whenever you set the, the maximum width, it creates like 200 pixels plus. And you can see there's like a blue rectangle. So this is like your safe area. So whatever happens inside there, it's it's your safe area. So this means that whenever your design reaches to from the 1,400 pixels to the 1,200 pixels, it will look like this. And then you go to the 1,200 pixels to the 1,000 pixels, then it will look other way. It won't be that fluid. It'll just you'll set what is going to look in between these breakpoints, and so on and on. Okay, so. Now that I'm going to preview it, you guys will understand what I mean. Sorry. So, see like nothing really happens. Now it hit a breakpoint. So now we're going to the next breakpoint. And you see how it, de how it resizes. Go to next breakpoint, and that's how it resizes. So that's the difference between fluid and fixed. I'm going to show you the fluid one again. And you actually see when it hits the breakpoint how it goes all the way, all the way. So that's the meaning of fluid. Okay, so that's why in this course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to build a responsive website with a fixed breakpoint because it's easier to control all the elements. Okay, so we're done for the first chapter. If you guys want to continue watching this, remember to subscribe to our channel. And next chapter, we're going to talk about master pages and other stuff too. So I hope you guys like the tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.